it is now uh, 12 noon Eastern time. We do have people joining us <clears throat> from across North America, so welcome to you all, regardless of what time zone you're in and how hot it is uh, where you're at today. Uh, I'm in southwestern Ontario, and um, we've had a nice hot summer here. Of course, hot is relative, but for, for us, compared to the last couple of years, it's been really great. So uh, enough with the weather uh, report, <laughs> and um, we'll get started here. So I just want to give you a little bit of background here. Um, I am a let's see, apologies here. Uh, I am a um, a self-employed person. My business is Motivate Marketing and Design. I'm a speaker and strategic marketing advisor. So I help uh, businesses like yours, small businesses, small and medium-sized businesses, um, <clears throat> figure out how they can market their business and have maximum impact. Um, and I also uh, help them do so uh, efficiently, which is really what we're going to be talking about today. I am also a, a, uh, an authorized local expert with Constant Contact, so I'm not an employee of theirs, but it's another hat that I wear in my business um, where I talk to people about marketing and uh, how they can use the Constant Contact tool uh, as their all-in-one marketing tool. So, and the reason that I like Constant Contact is um, uh, that they truly want their customers to be their own marketer, and so they empower their customers to do so using uh, really handy all-in-one um, marketing tools that help you leverage your your networks and uh, really help promote your business. So. Hence the hashtag, be a marketer here. So uh, enough about that. Why are we here today? Well, most if not all of you are, uh, you recognize the value, um, the exposure and improved sales that you get from social media. And, um, but it, it can take up a lot of time. And I hear that uh, complaint over and over again from my clients that, um, you know, I, I get it, I know that I need to be there, I know that's where my customers are, uh, but how do I do it, which channels do I choose, and how do I do it efficiently so that I'm not spending all day doing social media when that's not what my business is. So uh, that's what we're going to chat about today. Over the course of uh, the, the webinar today, I am going to put some uh, little polls up that'll help me get a bit more information about you, uh, your individual businesses, and, and um, uh, how you could use uh, social media and other digital marketing tools uh, like email marketing uh, to promote your business. So, um, But the important thing and, and the reason I hope that you're here today is to time now to learn so you can save time later. And, and these are things that you're going to be able to implement right away uh, and be able to um, leverage for your business so that you can just get back to the business of doing business. So um, uh, I'm just going to take a look here. We've got a question. Uh, are you not seeing, is nobody seeing slides uh, or the PowerPoint here? enter in the question area I want to make sure that you're seeing that you're seeing the slides if you're seeing the slides raise your hand you're not seeing slides one moment and let me how's that are you seeing a slide right now that says take time now to learn to save time later That's it. We're in. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> it's funny. I, I do live presentations a lot, and I also do webinars, but I find that every time I do a webinar, the, uh, the software just adds another layer of, of uh, fun shall we say. So thanks so much and uh, apologies for that. Um, you haven't missed anything tremendous 
to to uh, to this point. So uh, we'll carry on, and and thanks so much for your uh, for your input. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to make sure I've answered everybody here. All right, all good. Thank you. So, as I was saying, you want to take the time now to learn so that you can save time later. And like I said, you can implement the things that I'm going to share with you right away. Um, and and I recognize that we're we're all different. We have different aptitudes and abilities and. Some of us like spending time on social media and others just would rather either outsource it or, you know, minimize the amount of time we spend on it. Um, it can be a lot of fun. So, um, you know, we just want to, um, we just want to make it as efficient and as, and as effective as possible. So I'm just going to uh, put uh, a poll up here for you to, um, To answer quickly and then we'll move on. So how proficient are you with social media? Okay, we'll just give you another uh, 20 seconds here. A lot of you are saying you've been doing it for quite a while, but of course there's always ways that <clears throat> others acknowledge, you know, you're, you're not new to it, but you're, there's still, still lots to learn. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little caveat here, I'm suffering from a bit of allergy, seasonal allergies right now, so I apologize for that. Great, so it, it appears that all of you have uh, at least a, a bit of experience with social media, which is fantastic, because what we're going to be talking about today is going to be, is, you know, ways that you can improve what you're already doing. This is, this is a bit of a, you know, a lot of the, the tips that we're sharing here are not necessarily for beginners. I, I hesitate to call them advanced necessarily because everybody can implement them, but, um, but you know, they will certainly um, add uh, some efficiency to your business. So let's move on. So we all acknowledge that your time is worth money, seriously, um, but for a lot of small businesses it's hard to monetize our time. It's hard to actually put um, a, a figure on our time, but Constant Contact did a poll of, uh, you know, all of their customers and um, the average of all of the responses they received when they asked what's an hour of your time worth was $200, $273. Now that sounds like a lot, but if you actually think about all of your experience, your education, your product, your ongoing, uh, you know, your continuous improvement, what you're bringing to the table, um, your time is very valuable and, and you know, um, the, the saying time is money exists for a reason. So, uh, you know, we need to make the most of that time. So with that said, let's take a look at what we're going to be talking about today. First and foremost, we're going to talk about curating content and we'll define what that is and how to do it. Then we'll get into some social media management tools because um, there's, there's certainly a lot better ways that we can be managing social media than visiting each individual network and having to, you know, check out, you know, go looking for what people are saying to, about us and how people are sharing, liking, following, etc. Um, creating content, even using events to, creating, to create content, whether it's your own events or uh, other people's events that you're attending or other businesses' events, um, and, and apps. This is a great one. It's one of my favorite topics, talking about apps that help us keep on top of um, our social media presence and activity while we're on the go from mobile devices. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit, just a little bit, about the art of not overthinking. Because I think um, when we start hearing all this information and seeing what's going on online, it's easy to kind of feel overwhelmed. And we want to keep things simple and we want to keep them fun, uh, if at all possible. And then we'll talk about some next steps as well. So 
before we get started, I just want to um, show you a little illustration about um, how to create kind of a comprehensive online presence for your business. And your website is and always has been at the center of, or should be, at the center of uh, your online presence. And historically, uh, you know, we've always used search to drive traffic to our website. So uh, we took measures including SEO, search engine optimization, um, in order to make sure that our website ranked highly uh, in, in search results that are relevant to our business. Uh, we promoted our website, we've had it on our business cards, you know, we've always used whatever we could, whatever means we could to help um, promote our website to drive traffic there. That is still critically important. I think the website, your website is that soft place to land for people that it contains all the information people want to know about you, but with the um, the evolution of uh, online marketing, we've seen, um, you know, social media marketing and email marketing come to the forefront as well, and we we can be using all of them, and we should be um, to develop a, a, you know, the the optimal online presence, um, so that our email marketing, you know, allows people to connect with us on social media. It also drives traffic to our website. Our social media allows people to sign up for our newsletter and see what our newsletters are all about, and it also drives traffic to our website. And on our website, we should be allowing people to, you know, you might have a newsletter archive, but you also allow people to subscribe to your uh, newsletter. You also have, uh, you might have social media feeds like a Facebook or Twitter feed, but you'll also have the links, the little icons for the various social media networks you're on in order to allow people to connect with you on those networks as well. So um, they're all uh, connected. The difference between the three uh, different options is that um, website is inbound marketing, so you're relying on people finding your website. And like I said, you use those other channels to drive traffic there, so you help people find you. And of course, Google as well is a great way to uh, drive traffic to your website, making sure that you're optimized and you've got all your uh, Google collateral in, in place. Uh, social media is two-way engagement, so a lot of people um, this, statistically, a lot of uh, people don't necessarily connect with brands because they want to be marketed to all the time. They connect with brands because they want access to you. So they, you know, if they have a product or service question, um, or they, you know, they want to they want to learn from you. So um, it's a great way to uh, to educate and promote your brand by by providing them with um, with ongoing value that's related to your product or service. Um, so, and, and customer service is huge on social media. As an example, uh, the telecom provider that, that I use, I no longer call them, I don't use online chat or email, I go to Twitter and I, I connect with them directly there and I get a response back in usually on average about five minutes, uh, which is way faster you know, then, then I get customer service through any other channel. And um, so moving over to email marketing, that's the opposite of, um, of your web where, or your website, I should say, where you're actually, it's outbound marketing, so you're actually reaching out and connecting with people who have given you permission to connect with them directly. Having an email list is golden. There is nothing better. Nobody can take your list away from you unless people directly choose to unsubscribe. So, you know, in, in, in comparison to social media, especially Facebook and the way it's always changing its algorithms, uh, you never know who's going to see your posts and when um, and how many at a time. So, um, you know, 2% on Facebook would see any one post that you create um, and you compare that to email marketing marketing where you're looking at between 90 to 99 percent uh, of an open rate um, or sorry not an open rate a, a received rate um, that people are getting your email delivered to them and it's reaching their inbox so uh, really drives home the the, uh, the benefits of using email marketing as well but as a part of an integrated strategy using all of these channels 
So there's just some examples here, and I will let you know I'll be emailing this uh, slideshow to all of you afterwards. So uh, please feel free to take notes, but do know that you'll be receiving um, this information afterwards as well. So let's move on to curating content and how to go about doing that. First of all, what is curating content? When I you know, if you had said that to me even two years ago, I always think of, I hear curation and I think of art galleries and how they have an art curator who collects um, art exhibits and pieces, et cetera, in order to uh, display in the, in the gallery. So, you know, it's kind of the same idea. What we're doing is, and you'll see the, the quote here, it's the act of discovering, gathering, and presenting digital content that surrounds a specific subject matter. So we can go looking online for information that's relevant to our business that we know our customers would like to hear from, from us. So, you know, if you're if you sell a product, for example, um, you can look for for information uh, or share information about, you know, the maintenance of that product or, um, you know, how often you need to switch out that product or replace it with a new one or what have you. Um, with service, um, I'll use my my business as an example. It's all about providing additional value. Um, uh, providing tips and tricks for for marketing your business. So um, there's a number of different ways that I use to to curate uh, information so that I can share it with my audiences. And so share this information on your various channels uh, because your audiences differ from one channel to the next. So this is information that you might find that's relevant to your business. You can share it on your website. It might be in a blog post, um, for example. You can share it on uh, Facebook. Um, you can, sh you know, you can share it in your e-newsletter, what have you. Um, and a uh, very handy uh, thing to do. So. Um, one of the important things that it, if you're sharing other people's information, you want to make sure that you're giving credit to the original source. And there's a couple reasons for this. First and foremost, you don't want to be passing other people's content off as your own. Uh, so when you do find a piece of information online, whether you just simply retweet or share somebody else's information or whether you find something on a web page or a blog post and you take the link and copy it in and, and share it that way, um, it's great to say that it's via, you know, whoever the, the original editor or publisher was of the information. Um, so, you know, you don't want to be plagiarizing. Uh, but the more important thing, I think, um, over and above that is that you're making connections with those companies, those publishers of that content, and they're very grateful to you for sharing their information. So, you know, if you're sharing and saying that it's via somebody, chances are really good they're going to reach out and thank you for sharing. They may even start following you back, and they may even share your content as well. So that's critical to to note that um, you know that that you can further um, grow your networks and and further your engagement simply by um, simply by sharing other people's content and, and mentioning them. So, excuse me. So, you know, all of that said, that's really great, but the reason we're here today is because it's, it's time consuming to do this kind of thing, especially when you're doing it manually. And, and just for example, you know, say you have, you're using Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Facebook you want to look at, you know, if you have a business page, you want to look at between one to three times or three posts per day. I tend to stay on the lower end of that. I think sharing one to two a day is, is ample and gives people time to engage with the content and, and share it. Twitter, on the other hand, is like a cocktail party on steroids. So, you know, there's really no limit to the number of tweets you can tweet out a day. Um, that said, uh, anywhere between five to nine times is completely acceptable and really I, I'm serious when I say there there's no limit nobody's going to get tired of seeing your tweets um, so you know if you think about those demands on your on your time alone that's a minimum of six posts per day total and that's assuming you're just using Facebook and Twitter 
So one of the easiest things that you can do is to share content that other people create. And the reason is that you want to be that one-stop content shop for your audiences so that they know they can rely on you to share information with them, relevant their individual businesses and their lives, um, and you're providing that distinctive value. You're the portal of the information. Yes, you're not writing all the information, or you're not writing all that content, but you're the portal. You, they know that they can look to you for, to be the source of that information. And just as an example, here's a, um, a, a Twitter feed um, of uh, Maria Duran, and she shares a fantastic wide range of information for her audiences. So, um, you know, there's, there's how-to um, and helpful resources. And you see that she's always um, mentioning the, you know, she's using the via and mentioning the, the Twitter ID of the, of the original source of it. Um, so she's engaging with those sources and also ensuring that people know that she didn't create all of this. Uh, content. Now you'll see the third example here, she actually did create the content and she's driving traffic to her own um, website that way, but in this case she's saying thank you to somebody else for sharing her information or for, for, the, um, for the, uh, the shout out for her, for her uh, blog post. So um, that's a great way as well to create simple content is to listen socially and to say thank you to people who uh, engage with your content. Um, also, you know, her, her, the final post here is um, showing, giving people a sneak peek about what's coming down the pipe so that people can um, participate in that Twitter chat. If you're not familiar with, with tweet chats, um, they're, they're a fantastic way. It's like, it's almost like an online class for an hour. Uh, you just follow along. Um, you, you sit in on, keep Twitter up on the time, uh, at the time specified for the tweet chat, and uh, there's, there's tweet chats about every topic out there, so um, you just follow along. It might, might happen Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You get on Twitter, you create a separate column for, for the chat using the hashtag that they've created for the chat, and then you can follow along with what everybody is saying and you can learn from it. You can also participate in the conversation. Uh, you can grow your network that way. You can learn a lot. You can share a lot. You can drive traffic, create awareness about your brand. Um, really uh, awesome opportunity for those of you who are on Twitter who might uh, be wanting to kind of uh, take that next step. And like I said, you're building relationships. So there's, there's this whole kind of unspoken you scratch my back theory that does happen in practice uh, throughout the various networks. So, you know, if you're sharing something of theirs, um, chances are good that, like I said, they're going to connect with you. Uh, they might start following. They'll share your content. At the very least, you'll get, um, you'll get a thank you from them. Um, so you're able to engage with other people, experts in your industry, maybe people you look up to even, um, and so you're learning from them, but you're also connecting with them, which is fantastic, I think, and, and um, it wasn't really possible um, to this degree uh, before social media. So one example of, of a tool that you can use to help curate content that's going to save you a ton of time is called an RSS reader. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication, um, and all it is is something that allows you basically to create your own customized online newspaper that consists of all of the different sources and posts and content that you want to read, specifically that you've chosen to curate. Um, and that allows you then to not only read and learn from it, but choose the pieces that you want to share for your audiences all from one spot. So you log in every day, you can keep it on your mobile device, which I'll show you a bit about later, um, but it's really fantastic. And so instead of having to go to multiple sources, um, you can collect and store um, all of this current relevant content that you've chosen all in one place. So it definitely saves you time. One of the best RSS readers out there, and the, the one that I use, is called Feedly. So uh, go to feedly.com and um, 
I'll, I'll show you a little bit here about what the, the dashboard looks like. First, uh, when you log in, you can go to the, the dashboard up in the top right corner, or sorry, the search area, and type in the search uh, term or business name that you want to track down. What it's going to do is show you a list of results there, um, you know, the blog of that business or person, uh, any um, networks that they're on, for example, um, and then in the middle area, uh, the content area, you'll see the latest uh, content that's been shared w from that particular person or business or organization. And then from there, you can actually save uh, that search result over in the left-hand um, menu, and you can categorize it so it falls under the proper category. So if you're looking for, um, you know, if if you're looking for a specific um, how to maintain my product uh, information that you want to share with your audience, then you can store it under uh, that title on the left, and you'll see that here they have. Um, you know, on the left-hand side, they have categories. They say art, marketing. Um, I, I'm a big car buff, so I have a automotive or automobile uh, heading in mine, and that's just for my per own personal reading, but I also have my marketing, branding, different categories as well. Fantastic tool. Let me see there, just, uh, just zooming in to take a better look at um, how they've stored this this information. So how do you discover content? So that's fine, that's a great way to store it and a great way to discover content, but there's other ways as well. So one of the things that I highly recommend you do to learn about um, you know, what's going on in your industry is to use what are called Google Alerts. Um, and so very simply go to google.com slash alerts. You can type in any search criteria you want. And again, you know, depending on the nature of your business um, and, uh, and type it in there. And then you can set an alert. So those alerts, every time that, um, that topic or search term is mentioned, Google will kind of um, collect or curate all of those mentions and they'll send you, um, you know, a digest of those mentions and you can set it to either daily or weekly. Um, you can set, set the frequency that you, rele you receive these. You can have it real time so it sends you them as, as new content is published online that um, is relevant to your search term. Uh, and um, another great way that you can collect content and you can even keep a folder in your uh, inbox that allows you to quickly um, you know, a folder, sorry, that, that says Google Alerts, you can quickly reference anything that has come into your inbox. You can save it there and reference it later. Um, one of the important uses of Google Alerts, and if you're not going to use it to discover new content, I highly recommend you use it for at least this reason, is to see who's talking about your business and where your business is being mentioned online. So the two Google Alerts that you should have set up are at minimum are um, one for your name, so first and last name, enter it in there and set up an alert, and one for your business name, um, and the same thing, so that every time your business is mentioned online, you'll get an alert about it so you can see who's talking about your business, where it's being mentioned, and that is what's called um, social listening, and uh, it also is helping you to um, kind of um, monitor your brand online. So another way you can discover content is by signing up for other people's email newsletters. So you may send out your own newsletter, and, and I do as well, as I mentioned. So, you know, I'm, I send out uh, information to my audience, um, just monthly uh, small and medium-sized business marketing tips that they can, you know, implement right away. But I also subscribe to other people's newsletters to find out what they're talking about, especially those who are experts in the industry in which I work. So, um, you know, I subscribe to other speakers' newsletters, other uh, marketing business newsletters, etc., so that I can get an idea of, you know, 
not only what they're saying, but how they're delivering the information um, so that I can constantly improve uh, my own business, but also so I can share their content with my audiences. And again, you can create a folder um, in uh, your your email client inbox. So whether you're using an Outlook or you know Gmail or what have you, you can you can save all those email newsletters for later reference when you're ready to uh, to post to social media or create a new uh, email newsletter yourself. And of course. Uh, another way to discover content is through social media and just following uh, the pages, the business pages uh, and, and uh, profiles of those people uh, or businesses in the industry that, um, that share relevant information that you can curate and, and uh, share with your audiences as well. And a great idea for content uh, curation and, or sorry, generation or creation is to retweet. If you're using Twitter, uh, retweet a follower once a day just to share their content. Again, going back to, you know, they're going to appreciate that you're sharing their content, but it's an easy way for you to create a piece of content as well. On Facebook, you can do the same thing. On LinkedIn, you can do the same thing. Pretty much any social network out there, you can share content with them uh, in order to, um, in order to create new content uh, for you and to create uh, connections with other experts in your field. But I wouldn't, um, I, I have followed uh, other businesses or business people who make a habit of retweeting other people's stuff and if you're, all you're seeing from them is retweets, it kind of diminishes the value of following that individual person because all they're doing is just hitting the retweet button constantly for other people's content. They're not sharing anything uh, new or necessarily uh, directly relevant to their businesses. So keep that in mind as well. There's a balance to strike there. So let's talk about some social media uh, tools, uh, management tools. And there's a few reasons that you use social media management tools. One, to schedule your posts in advance. So the beauty of a scheduler is that you don't have to be sitting at your uh, computer or with, uh, with your mobile device in hand um, when you want to post content. So if you know that your audience is most active at, say, 11 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, um, you don't have to be sitting there at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. You can schedule a post to be, uh, to be, to go out then to your various networks. Um, another great thing is that it helps you uh, monitor engagement and engage back with people who are mentioning your brand or who who mention you specifically or otherwise have engaged with you. And finally, and and equally as important, is the analytics. So you can you have a good overview of who's you know engaging with your content, which of your posts are working on which networks at which times, etc. So that allows you to do more of what's working and maybe diminish uh, the stuff that's maybe not working for you as much. So we'll talk a bit more about that as well. So you may or may not have heard of Hootsuite. This is a fantastic one-stop kind of platform slash dashboard for you to use um, to be able to uh, load up your various networks that you're on and be able to schedule content for those networks. Um, you know, all, again, without having to flip between Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and what have you, you can add all of your networks in one spot and schedule the content to go out from this dashboard. So one key to remember is that yes, you want to schedule your content, but you don't want to forget about it either. And there's a few reasons. You want to make sure that you're staying current and that you're aware of what posts are, uh, that you've scheduled to go out so that um, you know you still want to leave room for spontaneity so that if you're out on the go and you take a picture of something that's relevant or you're at an event and you want to share it um, you know yes you've got your scheduler going but don't forget that you can continue to share uh, posts on the fly as well so you know you kind of want to have a nice combination of scheduled content as well as um, spontaneous content. So this is what you know your dashboard might look like. You can create these different columns. Um, one, the first one being the the content that you've 
got scheduled to go out so you can have kind of an overview of, of what's being posted and to where. Then you can break it down and, and you know, if you're on Twitter, you see the tabs up top. Um, so you can look at your Twitter feed, you can look at your Facebook feed, um, your business Facebook page as well, LinkedIn, Instagram, you can load up all the different um, all the different networks that you're on. But if we're looking at our Twitter feed, for example, you can see your tweets, you can see uh, retweets, so people who have retweeted your posts, you can see when people have mentioned you in a separate column there, um, and, and so on and so forth. So, um, like I said, this allows you to, to take a, have a good kind of overview um, without having to jump back and forth between networks of, of what people are saying and what the, the engagement looks like with your various, um, with your various posts. So just drawing attention here to uh, the, the different tabs that you can create um, with all your different networks there and you can refresh the stream, uh, you can add a new stream and you can add a new social network all from the top there of, that, of the dashboard. So for engagement, it allows you to monitor who's saying what and what they're doing, and it also allows you then to respond right from within Hootsuite um, to respond to people who are engaging with your content. So you see over here that somebody's mentioned um, mentioned you, and then and so it allows you then to to go back to respond to them right from your dashboard and say, you know, thanks for the share or if they have a question about, you know, an event that you just had, whether it's maybe a follow-up from a webinar or service, you can answer them right there and allows you to do so real time and do so in a, in a somewhat um, efficient um, and, and um, timely manner. Uh, you don't want to be waiting hours and hours or, or days to get back to somebody. You want them to see that you're, you're um, current and that you're active on social media and that you're listening. So uh, your customers and prospective customers really appreciate that. And the final thing that I mentioned is analytics. So you can actually take a look at how each of your posts has performed. Uh, you can take a look, you know, you can choose um, whether you want to look at it daily, weekly, monthly, what have you, to have a good overview of what's working and what's not. And then when you see you've got lots of engagement on, um, you know, these are retweets that are showing, if you see that you've got lots of engagement on particular days, take a look back at that day at those posts and see what content is working and what's not. Um, and then you can also do the same for mentions. So, on a Tuesday the 17th, in this example, you're seeing a lot of mentions. So what, did, what were you doing on that day? Was it posts? Were you active at an event? Um, were a lot of people in store that day and mentioned you? What, what drove um, all that activity on that day? So take a look at that and make sure that you're doing more of that in the, in the future as appropriate. Um, on the flip side, you can also look at days of low engagement and see, you know, maybe you didn't uh, have any, any posts or many posts that day, or maybe you did and they just didn't garner a lot of um, engagement. So uh, it's important to take a look at what's not working as well. You can also take a look at, um, you know, the number of clicks uh, for the engagement of each individual post uh, to see what was working. And if something didn't garner a lot of clicks, um, yes, you may look at it and say, eh, this didn't work, I'm not going to do as much of that, but maybe it was the timing of it. Maybe you post in the morning and maybe it's, it's better posted in the afternoon. Maybe it was, um, you know, about a, pardon me, and about an event coming up and it was too far out, so you want to repost it now. Whatever the case is, feel free to kind of reuse that content and post it again and see if when you post it the second time, that you get maybe get higher engagement. So just showing you here that you know you've got high levels of engagement for each of these uh, posts. But um, what this person did was, um, you know, in the in the number four example post post there, they got six clicks and they weren't terribly happy with that. So a few days later, they reposted it and they got a higher level of engagement. Now they got one more click, um, but every little bit helps. So um, just demonstrating the, the, the benefits of, you know, sometimes reusing your content and, and sharing it again. And a lot of times what I'll see is people 
um, they'll post in the morning, and I've done this before too, you'll post in the morning and um, you'll post again in the evening and say, you know, that it's for the evening crowd kind of thing because different people, depending on their own individual schedules, are online uh, more at different times of day. So you want to make sure to kind of hit all of your your different audiences during the day and not necessarily with every post but if you've got something you want to promote an upcoming event or or a new product launch or um, you know you're look or a volunteer opportunity if you're a not-for-profit organization then those ones you definitely want to make sure to repost at a, at a later date or time uh, to hit that different audience Let's talk about creating content at events. We all attend events. Some of us actually um, host events, but regardless of whether you're hosting or attending, um, you can create content uh, to share with your audiences. One, if you're attending events that are relevant to your business, it shows people that you're committed to um, continuous improvement and, that, and, and learning. Um, and you're also in the room with like-minded individuals. So you know, if you're sharing that you're at an event, um, you can connect with other people that are at the event as well um, and, and also connect with the hosts of the event. So you see this example here, um, you know, they, they posted a picture of the presenter and they actually used a tool um, like WordSwag or Overgram and they put a quote from the speaker uh, using their, their mobile phone. They used one of these apps and they took a quote from the speaker and they superimposed it on the image and then posted that image uh, to you know Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, what have you. Uh, and um, and uh, it's a fun way to share and visual content uh, is much more highly engaging than just straight textual content. So you can get up to 200% more engagement using visual uh, that's pictures and or videos. So, um, yeah, so uh, I highly recommend, you know, if you, if you like, if you're taking pictures and you're sharing them with people, get one of these apps like WordSwag or Overgram. There's a lot of different apps that you can use um, and, and have fun with your images and then post them to share. These images become much more highly shareable by other people who might be at the same event as you. So a couple of uh, different examples of, of ways that you can use content or create content around events. One is, you know, if you're hosting an event um, or you're part of the, the event team, make sure to say thank you to people who have um, tweeted or posted about your event with your event hashtag or, or if they mentioned you during the event. Make sure to reach out and say thank you to them afterwards. It goes a long way in, in creating a, you know, a memorable event experience even after the event is over and they'll keep you in mind and maybe watch for your events in the future. So saying thank you is never a, a bad way to create content. Um, you know, promoting the event coming up. So, you know, if if um, if you're if you've got an event coming up in the next month, for example, make sure to use the event hashtag. You can create your own event hashtags, which are highly um, highly valuable for driving additional engagement um, and allowing you to connect with uh, all of the people who are participating in the event. Um, you can also use it to. Um, to post, to link to uh, post event content that you may post online for those people who attended. So that's the uh, example in this case. And also, you know, if your event is a, an annual event, you want to make sure to increase traffic and participation in the event year over year. So you collect content, take pictures, um, take video testimonials of, um, of people who attended your event and then share that uh, with people so that they keep that event in mind for the next year. So you're kind of uh, driving participation in, in the following years. And a few different ways that you can create visual content because I mentioned it's so effective. One is actually PowerPoint. Now I'm a I'm a designer, so 
power, I kind of cringe when, when people use PowerPoint to create uh, content, but you can easily use it uh, if you don't have other editing software to create uh, an image by simply going in, creating a slide, using some images, putting some, you know, a, um, some t a text overlay in there, changing the colors, what have you, and then saving that slide as a, a JPEG. And then you can use that slide for visual content later. But honestly, there are so many great um, online, free online apps now and, uh, and um, websites now that you can use from either your desktop or your mobile device uh, that you really, there's, there's no reason for you um, to have to use something like a PowerPoint, which is presentation software, for creating great visual graphics and images. Uh, Canva is one of my favorites that I use. They've actually just uh, released their um, app, so now you can uh, create images from a mobile device as well. And um, you can do so free. Um, you can, and the nice thing is you can create images and graphics for all of your different social media um, uh, networks. So you can create ideal post sizes. You can also create business card, uh, business card artwork or, or, you know, offline artwork from Canva as well. And the nice thing is you go back to your account and all of your stuff can match. So your collateral all has that same look and feel and it all speaks to your brand, which I love. Um, some other tools that you can use are uh, PicMonkey, which has a really great app and allows you to create images and then put um, you know, a text overlay on it. And it's a fantastic app as well. Pablo is one as well that, that's um, a really great, nice, clean layout. And uh, so highly recommend, you know, you might want to check that one out. And finally, uh, Pixlr. Same kind of thing. You can add filters to your images, um, lots of uh, controls. So really it comes down to the user interface that you like the most. Some people like a lot of features and a lot of uh, capabilities. So it's up to you to choose which one works best for you. But remember that they are available for you, so it's, it makes it super easy to create visual content. And, you know, all of this is available to you, so you can create that compelling visual content. And it doesn't take a lot of time, which I love. Speaking of apps, let's talk a little bit about apps, because we're all on the go quite a bit, and uh, we're not all sitting in front of our computer all day long. Um, and even for those of us who are, um, we still have our mobile devices with us a lot and we're, we're responding, we're engaging using our mobile devices instead of the computer that's sitting right in front of us. So a couple apps here. There are a lot of apps to choose from and this is just five. So we're just scratching the surface, but these are five fantastic apps. Um, and, and honestly, they're highly effective. So the first one, you know, we talked about it before is Feedly. Um, so that allows you to continue to curate content. If you're reading content on a mobile device, um, you can go in and search and find content uh, to share right away. Uh, and if you have a Feedly account, you can actually link it with your social media account so you can share right from Feedly, which is a nice feature. Um, so this I like to call your kind of online, your custom online newspaper, um, which is a really nice feature. N you know, newspapers, the actual paper version of newspapers have, are really um, struggling to stay relevant. And I myself am not a newspaper reader, but I love the fact that I can create a custom uh, newspaper online. So, and if Feedly is, uh, and you see here in the, in the dashboard, um, how you can uh, build up your content options on the on the left hand in the menu there. So if Feedly is your newspaper, Flipboard, another app, is your magazine. So this basically does the same thing, but you see the layout here and how it looks on your mobile device. Um, very visual um, and, and it does the same thing, allows you to curate content, to save it to Flipboard, um, and also to share it straight from Flipboard with your various social networks, which I I love, and, and I love the layout. I love that it's so visual. Um, it's quite compelling. Hootsuite has an app as well, so you can uh, manage all of your 
social media content straight from your mobile device instead of having to be at your computer. And it syncs, obviously, with your computer so that um, regardless of what device you're using, you're going to be seeing the same things. But you can monitor your brand and what people are saying about you and, you know, tweets, mentions, etc. Um, you can also um, sort your uh, information so you can create tabs for maybe your your professional presence versus your personal presence online if you have both of that uh, both going on online so uh, great app and just an extension of what you can do from uh, your desktop buffer is uh, buffer is like a Hootsuite but doesn't offer the social listening but it's a great clean platform if you just if you if you don't want a lot of stuff going on it's not busy it's super clean and it allows you to add the free version allows you to add up to three networks um, so I have my LinkedIn Twitter and and um, uh, Facebook on my my buffer app and it allows you to schedule up to 10 um, posts per network uh, at any one time and you can also add um, so you can have this buffer app on your phone but you can also add an extension to your desktop so that you can click on that extension at any time if you're on a web page or a blog post and you want to schedule um, that to that share that information with your audience you click the little extension um, you can do the same from your phone to be able to share it add it to the queue and it offers three options when you're adding information to the, uh, your queue of posts that you have scheduled to go out. Um, you can either uh, schedule it to send right away. You can move it to the top of your queue so it's the next thing that will be sent out according to the schedule that you specify or they just add it to the bottom of your list so it gets added to the to the queue um, as you would. So, um, But I really love the Buffer app as well. Very handy, very quick to use and a nice clean user interface. Finally, Pocket, and Pocket is actually exactly what it sounds like, and I love this one too. It also has not just the app, but also a, a, a browser extension to your desktop so that when you're um, browsing for information, whether from your mobile device or um, from your desktop, you can, um, if you either run out of time to read something, but you want to make sure to get back to it, or you find some information that you really like that you want to share later, you can just click on your little pocket uh, icon and you can it'll automatically save that information for you. And uh, the beauty is that it also allows you to add tags to the information. So if the information is something that you want to share on Facebook specifically, you can add a Facebook tag. You can, you know, if it's, um, if you want to um, categorize your content by topic, you can add a tag that says, you know, product maintenance or something like that. So that when you go to your pocket dashboard, you can quickly go to your tags and find all of the stuff that you want to post on Facebook. For example, find your Facebook tag and all of the information in there and then share start scheduling it to share to Facebook. So great way to curate content um, there as well. So just to wrap up, very simply, we want to talk about the art of not overthinking. And I did allude to this at the beginning. You want to get out of your head. And, and we all kind of bring different flavors to the table. We all have different personalities and some of us are much more left brain than right. But really, just get out of your head. You don't need to overcomplicate this. Um, it can be a quite straightforward forward process. And the best things to do are to, one, be curious. So look for content. Um, find it through different channels. Follow other people on social media who are thought leaders in your respective industry or industries. Um, sign up for other people's uh, email newsletters. And um, just be curious. Uh, always be learning about new stuff that you can not only apply to your own business, but share with your audiences. Number two, um, you know, presuming that you're in a small, uh, small business and that you own that small business, what that, what that does for us, it gives us a tremendous advantage and allows us to be ourselves online so you can bring that flavor your flavor to the table and that's going to resonate with other 
um, with other like-minded individuals, which is a great way to kind of find your tribe online and also have fun with it. So not every post needs to be curious or needs to be humorous or fun, but humor is highly engaging. So just you know, be sure that at least some of your posts uh, incorporate some humor into them. So let's talk about next steps then based on what we've talked about. First, set up an RSS reader like Feedly or something similar. Um, set up a social media management tool. Highly recommend Hootsuite for that because it allows you to schedule, it allows you to monitor uh, engagement and engage uh, back with people, respond to people, and it allows you to look at the, um, the analytics, um, the, the metrics around your posts, what's garnering the most attention so that you can do more of what's working. Um, and start identifying content that you can share through all those different channels that that um, I discussed with you today. Um, and then make sure to use the apps and the tools that we've talked about to schedule and share your curated content. And of course, finally, have fun on it. Be yourself and, and uh, in, your, in your posts and online. You want your offline presence to mirror your online presence. You want it all to be consistent so that people get what your brand is all about, whether they see you, you know, in your store, on the street, at an event, or anywhere online. And so, you know, if you're uh, if you're not a, a um, if you haven't got the, the right tools in your tool, toolbox right now, um, consider checking out Constant Contact for email marketing, for social media marketing, for event marketing, so you can, um, you know, uh, accept registration and market your events online. You can even use uh, their surveys and polls to, to send out um, surveys uh, to get information. You can do a fun poll online or you can get information, feedback on your products and services from your, from your customers. Um, and there's certainly more resources that you can, uh, or that you can refer to as well. So uh, constantcontact.com for other online seminars and events. You can scroll down to seminars. You can get started today with a 60-day free trial of Constant Contact if you like. And I actually have a promo code for you um, that will get you 30% off for the first three months if you're interested. So I can send you that information as well. Uh, the, the Constant Contact blog has tons of great information about using uh, email and social media for your business. Uh, highly relevant information, so you can find it at blogs.constantcontact.com slash library. You can also find them online um, uh, through a number of different social networks. And as I mentioned before, I have my own newsletter as well. If you go to emotivate.tips, you can sign up for my newsletter and choose the topics that, that uh, you want to learn. If you're not currently using Constant Contact, they, they do have an offer available right now. So you can get a custom designed email template that looks and feels like your website and your other marketing collateral. You can get help with a contact list upload and configuration of that list and a getting started guide with access to video tutorials and an invitation to a, a live how-to webinar so that, that walks right through uh, the Constant Contact product. Um, and also, as I mentioned, you can get 30% off for, for the first three months. So um, I'll send you more details about that via email uh, after the webinar, so watch for that. But if you're already a Constant Contact customer, and I know some of you uh, on the line are a Constant Contact customer already, um, uh, reach out to me, connect with me, um, respond to the email that I'm sending out, and I'll be happy to uh, provide a complimentary account review. And these are the kinds of things that I will look at when I'm looking at your Constant Contact account. First of all, making sure you're fully compliant with um, with CASEL or CAN-SPAM, depending on whether you're in Canada or the United States. Um, making sure you're fully integrated with social media, and I'll give you tips um, and recommendations for how you can better do that. Also making sure you're fully mobile responsive because um, as of last year, um, the consumption of online content um, was that mobile consumption of online contact surpassed that of desktop consumption. So you want to make sure that your, your um, campaigns uh, and your 
template are fully mobile responsive so that people they look good on any device on any screen size and I'll also be able to identify any cost savings opportunities for you um, that uh, that might be available so please do reach out to me if you have questions um, we we are um, right at the the one o'clock mark right now although I'm happy to stay on for a bit of time yet if you if you have any questions that you want to ask right now please feel free to uh, to ask them and um, I'll take a look at uh, at the questions here and answer uh, answer as we go along and thank you for attending today Elaine asked, um, you know, is this recorded? And I didn't mention that at the beginning, but yes, this is recorded, and I'll share the link to that recording with you uh, at the end, Elaine. Thanks so much for joining in today. And Carol had the same question, so uh, thank you again. And um, yeah, I'm glad that you found the information useful. Any key takeaways from today? Anything you learned that you didn't know before? I love knowing that you've gotten value out of this because I, you know, I see a lot of people showing up for both webinars and even my live uh, events, and then they go back to their business and they don't do a lot with the information. And I really want to make sure that there's information here that um, that you can use to to implement in your business right away. So Carol's asked um, where I'm located. Carol, I am, oh, you're in Texas, awesome. I'm actually in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, but I can work virtually with you if you're interested. So um, you can uh, email me or, or respond to the email that I'm gonna send out to you all after to chat about how I might be able to help you. How hot is it in Texas right now? Oh, Carol, you're a you're an ALE. Awesome. I haven't connected with you at one con, but that's wonderful. I'm sorry I didn't recognize your name. 98 degrees in Texas today. Wonderful. We're a little shy of that, but uh, but not much. We've had a nice hot summer up here. I think uh, we get humidity. I don't know if you get the humidity in Texas as much. It's probably a bit drier. Oh, humidity is a serious problem there. That's interesting. Yeah, it's been a dry it's been a dry summer up here. We haven't had the rain that the farmers need and and that um thing. We're pretty grass is pretty brown, but you know what? It's summer and I love summer, so we'll take it. We Canadians love to talk about weather. Not at all, Carol. Thank you so much for joining. I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't recognize your name and um, would love to connect with you uh, further afterwards. Good luck with your event tomorrow. Any other questions for those of you? Who, uh, I've got a little bit of time left here, so um, any any questions that you have?
right, I'm not seeing any other questions pop up right now. So I want to say thank you again for, for joining me today. Um, and please do follow-up email to come through. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day.